the tea on George Gascon from a criminal defense attorney's perspective. Let's go. My name is Veronica. I am a criminal defense attorney here in Los Angeles, and I help people who have been arrested put their criminal cases behind them so that they can enjoy their lives and their freedom. And again, this video is going to be about the tea or kombucha in my case. Um, on George Gascon and basically the effects that he has had on the criminal justice system in Los Angeles um, and on my cases on criminal defendants overall. Okay, so the very first experience I had involving George Gascon and his policies was this. Okay, so it's December 2020 and I was in trial. We had just picked a jury for a, I think it was like 34 count attempted murder case. My client was facing several lives in prison basically for this case, right? And I was working on my opening statement here in my home office and I get a call from the DA. It was, it was late too, it was maybe like five or 6 p.m. They typically end their day at 4.30. Um, so I, I answer, I'm a bit confused, a bit apprehensive. We had opening statements that were going to go the next morning. And he, he sounded really distressed when I answered the phone and said that, you know, in light of his new boss, there was a new offer he needed to give me. And prior to this, their offer was, I, I think it was around 10 years. It wasn't really extreme considering what my client was facing, but it was it was still, you know, significant and I and my client both believe that he was innocent. He didn't want to take that. Um, and he offers me time served. My client was still in jail at the time because his, um, his bond was, I don't know, over a million. It might have been a few million. And he sounds so distressed as he's saying this. And I'm like, uh, um, okay, well, I think my client will take it. I'll have to talk to him, but I'm pretty sure he'll take it. And he just, so then he starts telling me, he kind of is like breaking down. And he's telling me, and this is a really good DA. He is very, very good at his job. I saw him do the jury selection. He was, he's good. Um, and very professional, but he just started telling me about how he was probably going to quit his job. Maybe he was going to go down to Orange County and work there. He was so upset. And this guy, to get on a case like that as a DA, you have to work your way up. So he'd been working his way up for a while and he's just going to leave. Um, so I, I didn't know what to say because I'm really happy at this point. He's sad. Um, I just listened to him for a little bit. Okay. Anyway, so the next morning, um, I told my client about this, and of course he's like, "Holy shit! Yes, of course I want to. Uh, yes, I want to get out." Um, and that was my first experience with George Gascon. But the problem in this that I think you can see is that that DA, like George Gascon, came in so hard. He had just assumed office that same day, and he's already going to all of these really hardworking DAs. Say what you want about them, but they're hardworking, they're committed to their jobs. And he's telling this guy who had told me and my client, you know, hey, we're giving you whatever, I think it was, it was like around 10 years, but it was single digits. This is the best offer, last offer you're gonna get, and otherwise we're going to trial. He'd already picked a jury, did his best at that. He probably had his opening statement ready or was working on it. And this guy comes in, he's like, hello, I'm the new boss. Actually, you know what, that several, life, several lives case that you're working on there. Nah, that's going to be, we're going to give him time served there without even looking at the case. That's the thing, right? Gascon didn't look at all these cases. He didn't look at that DA's case. He just made all of these directives and orders and forced the DAs who actually do know their cases to um, just offer these things that they didn't think made any sense. Um, so that was my first experience. And then after that, what started happening is that the judges and the DAs almost kind of started to unite. Um, the DAs were ordered to dismiss all special allegations, enhancements, like gun enhancements, gang enhancements, things that add more time. They were ordered by Gascon or directed through his directives to dismiss them and so they would they had a piece of paper that they would read really unenthusiastically that would say that basically 
their boss is making them request this. And the judges got together and they realized, oh, we can just deny this request. So technically the DAs are still doing their jobs. They're not disobeying orders. Um, but the judges are denying these um, requests to remove these allegations. Now, prior to Gascon, if a DA had requested to remove a special allegation uh, because they didn't feel that it was appropriate or whatever, that was no problem. But after Gascon, that was just summarily, it became summarily denied. Um, another thing that I've seen since then, and before, you know, before everything was really being figured out, and granted, there are a lot of really smart people, judges, and lawyers who were working together to try to figure this out. So it wasn't just Gotham City here un unleashed in LA. Um, it, for a while, things were a little bit better for criminal defendants. I mean, for that one client I just mentioned, yeah, I mean, the, that was great, right? That was good. And actually, I do believe that that guy was innocent. He was a really good guy. Um, I don't think that he's a danger to our streets. So if that's what you're thinking when you're watching this, I mean, it was good that he, that he got that benefit compared to some others, definitely. Um, and... What basically he has done is he has taken away discretion from DAs and DA supervisors. There's a whole structure to the DA's office. There are the baby DAs, the intermediate DAs, then there are the DA supervisors, the super supervisors, grand supervisors, and then at the very top, you know, Gascon. And he took, like, what you would do before is you would have the lower DAs that are looking at the case and hopefully I mean they're looking at it and they can't prosecute they don't prosecute and they can't every case to the maximum so they're using their discretion right and then if that's not really working you go to the DA supervisor and you work with the DA supervisor but all of a sudden all of that discretion all of that looking at the details and decision making was gone um, and what the DA started to do is they started to find other ways to fuck over criminal defendants. So and so maybe I have a client who's a gang member and they cannot add the gang enhancement to him. But what they can do when maybe he shot his gun and they can't add a, a gun enhancement either, but maybe he shot his gun at some dirt nearby, near, near someone, right? And maybe before that would have been assault with a deadly weapon, although I think that really it should be like negligent discharge of a firearm or it's something about discharging the firearm right it shouldn't be if you aim your gun down and you point it into the dirt and you fire it should that really be any kind of assault i don't know but they may have charged him with assault before gascon but now what they're charging them with instead is attempted murder and the thing is that how they structure it how they structure this whole system is that's a bullshit charge right attempted murder if you want to murder somebody, why are you going to aim into the ground where they are not, right? But the problem is that how they structure everything in the system is the DAs will give you an offer that expires bef before the probable cause hearing. So if you bring this in front of a judge and try to show the judge, like halfway through a felony case, you try to show the judge, hey, this is not an attempted murder case. They have no reason to believe it's an attempted murder case. So you should drop that. Well, what will happen is if you do that, if you get to that point, the DAs will, and this has been their policy since before Gascon, and Gascon, as far as I know, has never come up with any rules against this. Um, what they'll do is say, okay, well, that offer is no longer on the table. If you make us have this probable cause hearing, the preliminary hearing, then I'm taking that offer away. So by even going in front of that judge, you have a risk. Also, most judges in LA County are not going to dismiss anything at the probable cause hearing because they just figure they're elected officials. They don't want to be soft on crime. Um, what they want to do sometimes are victims of the crime, families, whatever. They're, they just figure, you know what, the safest thing is to say there's enough. We'll just send it to the trial court. Well, now the criminal defendant is faced with potentially going to trial and if you lose at trial on an attempted murder charge, you are potentially facing life. This is, again, shooting a, a gun at the ground, at the dirt. You're potentially facing life. And juries, look, I mean, m hopefully that case would be able to be won in front of a jury, but juries don't like guns, and that's another thing um, that I'd like to talk about regarding Gascon. That's something else that's pretty important. They don't like guns. They don't like gang members. Even without a gang allegation, you can usually tell if someone is one. And there's still that risk. 
So DAs are overcharging people instead of adding these enhancements. And Gascon does not, he personally cannot go through every single case to determine if it is overcharged or not. So, and that, to me, that's somewhat worse. And the, the DAs are not doing this on a discretionary basis. For the most part, they're just doing it to everybody. Oh, a gun was fired? Well, you know what? That's attempted murder. Doesn't matter what you hit. Doesn't matter if you weren't even aiming at that person. That's attempted murder. That's what they do. Um, just charge them to the moon with as many things as they can. Another thing is that, look, crime has gotten worse in Los Angeles. Jurors are tired of it. You go to 210 West Temple, the main courthouse in Los Angeles, and Gascon's office is across the street, and you see there's graffiti everywhere. There's crime everywhere. It is horrible. We all see this. The sign from the, the 110, the sign that goes to my office, has been graffitied for months. You can't even, nobody can see what it says to exit there. I mean, it's getting worse and worse. The city is getting more hideous. It is just, it's getting less, it's getting more and more unsafe. And no one wants that for the city. No one likes that for this city. Um, and so what's happening is that now we are getting jurors who hate guns. I mean, I asked a pool of 45 potential jurors how many have at least considered, whether they have one or not, have they at least considered or would consider purchasing a gun at some point? And only one person who actually did have a gun said yes. Only one. Everyone else, and I, I asked them questions. I made sure everybody was clear on what I was talking about here. At least, you know, to think about maybe I get one. Maybe it would be nice to have one for protection for my house. They're all just saying no because they are just, they just were talking about how terrible gun violence is. Um, the gangs, it's getting worse and worse. And part of that, I don't know that it's guess gone necessarily you know, letting people out or being light on crime early as much as it is that what happens, I don't know if he even realizes this, but I know that what happens is when there's some sort of change in criminal law that is positive for criminals, and Gascon made many substantial ones that's positive, that's light on crime, it spreads like wildfire and gets exaggerated through all of the gangs, through all of the jails, through all of the prisons. And so there's this idea that like, hey, we can do anything now. Um, there's no, you know, it used to be that graffiti, which if you're in Los Angeles, you're probably really fed up with, um, could actually be a strike offense um, in certain conditions with the gang enhancement, but no longer. So we just see our city is covered in graffiti now. Um, and all of that, that does not help criminal defendants. It really, it's not good to have these jury pools that are tired of crime, that are like, oh, okay, he's sitting over there in the defendant's table. He has tattoos on himself, so he must be guilty. And I know that, may, I know that people thought that way before Gascon as well, but I found that even with that, when I talked to the jury pools, I people were a little bit more, they were less judgmental. They were less like, okay, I know you're one of those. I, I, I don't know how much YouTube actually allows swearing, but I'm one of those, <laughs> you're one of those MFers who graffitied all over the exit sign and caused me to miss my, my exit this morning and be late for jury duty. I mean, you know, and I, I'm putting that, I'm saying, that in jest, there are much more serious crimes that go on all of the time. I mean, areas that used to be safe are no longer safe or are plagued with random violence that terrifies juries. And my clients who may not be involved in that any of that specifically at all are now sort of getting blamed for it implicitly by jurors. And that is not what we want. In my opinion, although I am very happy for that first client I had who got the time served offer, in my opinion, Gascon went about all of this stuff in a completely stupid way. He alienated all of the DAs under him. He just totally alienated all of these 
many of them really skilled people, really smart people. He should have done this in a more targeted way over time because there are a lot of unfair things in the criminal justice system. The bond system is fucked, but he didn't do it. He just came in like a hammer. And I mean, for lawyers, when you tell us that something is an order, we must do something and we really don't want to, we are going to put all of our effort into seeing what we can do to get around that or take you down. I mean, it's as though, it's almost as though like if I, I don't, have a boss but if i did and it's you know all criminal defense attorneys are being ordered to like tell our client to take the first possible deal i would be like yeah i'm gonna quit i like no matter what it i i'm gonna quit i'm not gonna do that or i'm gonna find some way around it and say you know I, i'm not going to just do that right like this is a cause that you are behind and he was telling all these people who worked there for decades their careers are there that, hey, I'm just gonna tell you what to do and forget about all of that before. Like, it's one thing to, you know, you have a different boss who maybe has some different perspectives, changes some things, but to come in and just be like, nah, F you all, I'm the king, the emperor, the dictator, you guys are gonna do what I say, it doesn't matter. That was just a stupid, stupid way to do it. Anyway, um, I hope that you found this rant informative. Um, if you do have an active criminal case in Los Angeles and you are wondering how Gascon may have affected it, may affect it in the future, or you just have questions and want a consultation, feel free to give me a call. You can also click on the link below to book a consultation with me.